Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to quickly recap a game that was annotated on the reddit.com chess forums. Uh, basically, I'm just going to look at it real quick, try to see if I notice any any clear improvements that the hero could have played. The hero was black in this game and is rated about class C, he says. I don't know what that means. Maybe 1500. <clears throat> Not 100% sure. But I think it's like 1500 against 1700, something like that. Uh, I looked at the game very quickly, and it looked pretty solidly played by black. So we'll see what happens here. Take c4. Now this is... The exchange French is not considered the most dangerous line, because it's just some, a pretty symmetrical position, and black usually can get pretty decent chances for equality. Um, Maurice Ashley and Josh Waitzkin actually did used to play this line. It's not really so impressive, but it's not horrible either. <clears throat> so, I, I don't really know the theory here. I know that almost any move should be fine for black, like knight f6, and the, before bishop check would have been fine too. Uh, and now, black played a pretty standard move. All these moves look completely fine to me, and, and black's position looks totally fine. Uh, the only bad news now is we give up the bishop pair. But see, the thing is, if, if knight takes, he's going to have problems with castling. Well, first we could take this, so knight takes just doesn't work. So we gave up the bishop pair, but we did, we did mess up his pawns a little bit. Uh, pawn takes was played... Um, let me see, did he give any did he give any annotations here? Uh, he wrote some annotation, I just can't quite figure out what it means. Um, maybe he's saying that the C takes D is, is a slight mistake. I mean, I noticed two things here. Number one, White's pawns are a little funny. Um, he, he has these doubled pawns. And number two, he hasn't castled yet. Whenever they haven't castled, I always look for something to do because they absolutely have to spend the move on castling, which means that we have one tempo to kind of like do whatever we want. So, I mean, like for example, there, there's some, some ways we can gain time. Like, we could play b5. I, I don't know if it's good, but if bishop takes queen a5 check. And it's just like a typical thing that happens when you're not castled. There's just random tactics that appear. Uh, which is why you should always be hyper-focused on that fact. In the game he played rook e8, but I'm kind of looking at this and b5 because my idea is to, to develop the bishop to b7. So let's say he goes bishop d3 for example. Uh, maybe bishop b3 is better. But like now after castles, we have some play on this battery. I, I don't know how good it is. Maybe he can just go f3. Um, but it's something to keep in mind. You know, we go knight c6, attack this pawn, put our rooks in the center, uh, black might be doing okay here. Uh, so that looks like a pretty interesting idea. Uh, the, the thing though is I'm a little hesitant. When you take this, you, you do fix this pawn structure. So I'm, I'm trying to weigh whether that's a, a good idea or not. Because another move we could play is just knight c6. But I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. It's not a super easy position for me to figure out off the top of my head. I, as far as I can tell, this move's not horrible. I'm just saying that it does fix the pawns. Rookie 8. I mean, God, I just want to try to do something before the castling. Um, I mean, this is the tempting thing to do. Bishop b7 and after castles. I don't know. I don't see anything too convincing, but maybe knight, a, knight c6 to a5 to c4, rook c8, play down the c-file. I don't know, I feel like this is something that would have been a consideration for me. Uh, instead, the game went rook e8, castles, and only then pawn takes. Bishop takes, bishop to g4. Uh, this is an interesting move. I, I believe the idea is if f3, we're trying to entice this move because it makes the f e3 square weak, and we could just go back to maybe e6 with the bishop. Um, one thing that's important to note is usually when your opponent has the two bishops, you want to trade off one pair of bishops. It's much less of an advantage to have bishop and knight against two knights as it is to have two bishops against bishop and knight, or two bishops and knight versus bishop and two knights. The bishop pair likes to be together, and in general, in this situation, trading bishops is like almost 
at gaining a quarter of a pawn. I, I, that's a total random estimation, and it depends on the position, of course. But, so, bishop e6 makes sense in, in a lot of these positions. But, okay, the guy went rook e1, which strikes me as a little clumsy. Uh, for some reason, it just looks a little weird. Knight c6, f3, and now it's black to move. Uh, you guys should pause your video, think about what you would do here. So, yeah, my, my brief glance at this game, I noticed that black played a very nice tactic here. He found this move, knight takes d4. And the reason it's good is because if the knight takes, rook takes rook, followed by queen takes d4. And if pawn takes bishop, uh, I think simply knight takes knight works. Rook can't take because it's busy defending the queen. And if the queen takes, uh, I guess this queen takes d1. And what black has won a pawn and is a rook in the seventh and has good winning chances. So a very nice tactical shot. So far this game, I mean, black has been playing at a very high level, much higher than his rating would suggest. So knight takes d4 was not played. He, he played bishop to b2 in the game because he just couldn't find anything better. So let's see, can we find any tricks here? I'm looking for tricks. I mean, no, I, I just don't quite see anything. Like if, if bishop f3, I think queen d4 works. Knight f3 doesn't seem to work. So probably what he did was was pretty pretty decent. Uh, he didn't do that. He went knight takes e2, yeah. rook e2, queen takes d1, rook d1, rook takes, bishop takes. And now we have two bishops against a bishop and knight, but black has an extra pawn. It's going to be very hard to win this position. That's for sure. Uh, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't recommend this, this entire system for black because of stuff like this. You want a pawn, and it's still hard to win. I see no reason whatsoever that black should go bishop check and bishop takes knight in this opening. Uh, I can't remember what I used to do against this line in French, but why are you giving up a bishop for a knight? Like, I just don't see the reason. Um, but okay, bishop e6 was played. King f2, rook c8, all looks pretty normal. Rook d2, uh, king f8 I'm not a big fan of. Ooh, we got to figure out how to try to win this position. Now, obviously, it's not going to be easy because these two bishops are strong. However, you know, we, we do have chances. I mean, we, we have an extra pawn. We have to try to just push our queenside pawns and just somehow make something happen. Um, bishop c4 would be nice if we can ever trade the bishops off. Uh, what happened in the game was kind of interesting. King f8, I just... It makes sense. It's just like... Okay, it makes some sense. a4... But it's, this is the problem, like bishop a3 check is coming now. I, I just felt like when you're playing as two bishops, it's like a little a little optimistic to think you can just walk your king into the center. I, maybe make a move like h6, or a move like knight to d5, and just kind of play from there. Uh, maybe a setup like f6, king f7, you know, and just slowly try to advance our pawns. I'm not... I'm not in love. I mean, I, I think it's going to be hard to win. But what happened in the game was king f8, a4, bishop c4. And, and they just agreed to a draw, which, which can't be right. Um, I mean, you should go bishop back to e6, and white will go back. You just got to try to win. I mean, you're up a pawn. You can't lose. Uh, he, he has an annotation at some point. like, uh, Where does he say? I'm now depressed after king f8. I've avoided some back rank cheapos. Uh, I'd, I'd rather play white, even though white is worse. White is an easier plan, and I feel like all my pieces are big fat targets. Yeah, that's totally wrong. I mean, white is definitely, you don't want to play white. White can't ever win in a million years. Um, you just, you know, stick a knight on d5. Let's try to play some natural moves for both sides. It's hard. I mean, white, it's not that easy to improve the position. I don't like this king f8 move, of course. I would have played, uh, I don't think it matters that much, because time is not an issue here, so like, even though we played king f8, we can kind of just go back to g8. It doesn't matter that much. But let's try to be accurate and go knight d5 right away. Now, how does white proceed? The rook's kind of tied down to d2 because the rook c4, c2. It's, it's not easy to come up with a plan for white either. And so 
When I see that, I think black has a lot of time to slowly improve the position. And therefore, f6 and king f7 are called for. And then some type of plan where we slowly advance the queenside pawns, uh, make you know, past pawns somehow. It's, it's not going to be easy. But, you know, I think it's, it's, it's within the realm of possibility, for sure. Uh, maybe, gosh, how do we do it? Let's make some random moves for black, for white, sorry. Let's go g3. Um, f4 gives up the e4 square, but also allows bishop f3. So we'll, we'll go here to try to go bishop f3. Just kind of see, like, how to proceed. This is annoying, actually. Yeah, this is annoying. Bishop d4, at least we have rook a5, but our, our pieces are a little tied down. What we should have done, actually, ugh, maybe b6, and after bishop f3, some kind of knight e7 type move. I mean, we still control the entry squares for the rook. We're still a pawn. So, you know, we just sit and try to just slowly... It's going to be a long game. It's not going to... We're not going to win anytime soon. But we have no risk. Like... White has no active plans still. The bishops are not amazing here. Uh, like if a4, the pawn gets weak after rook c4. So I, what would white do? I actually don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just going to make a random move. Just because I, I just want to demonstrate how black can play. Black's next move is easy, king f7. Uh, and now what to do? Maybe rook c4? Hmm. Other option is king e8 and rook d8, but then you can go rook c2. Rook c5, maybe? Try to go bishop d5? That makes sense. Try to trade the bishops. I mean, that would be a dream to just get one bishop again. We would really love to trade these two bishops off. Uh, but my point here is that you just gotta learn to play these games. You. Taking a draw against a higher rated player here is just going to hurt you in the long run. And you, you need to get to be 200 points stronger. And you need to be able to try to beat somebody 200 points stronger in a position like this. I and mean, black is better. And how do you win? That's the problem. You're not going to win anytime soon. It's not going to happen in five moves. There's, it's very hard to even come up with a plan. However, just make any improving move. Knight d5 is a great move because it blocks the rook and plans the typical f6, king f7. And that's definitely the right starting move, I'm pretty sure. Um, but even after bishop c4, you know, it's like just move 21. You probably have a lot of time on the clock. You gotta just keep playing. I know the king went to f8. I mean, honestly, we can just go back, no big deal. And, you know, black does this maybe. We just go back to d5. Like like I said, we go f6, king f7. And, you know, the, the key to winning these positions, just focus on slow, slow improvement. And don't be surprised if it's going to take you 50 moves to win this game. However, white, black has an undisputed advantage in this position. And you just cannot take a draw. It's, it's, a, it's a very bad habit that needs to get broken. You just need to suck it up and try to win. That's how you learn. You try to win extremely small advantages against stronger players. And sometimes you do. Um, it's not easy, but it's, it's practice you need. You can't only try to win these positions against 1200s. In which case, you obviously will try to win. And then you'll, when I say 1200, that would be 300 points lower than the player who posted this game. So, like, you're probably going to win then, and it's going to be like, wait, whatever. I mean, if you can beat a 1200, and you can beat a 1400, you have to try to beat a 1700 here. Uh, the second thing from this game, though, I, I just don't, I don't see no reason why we're going bishop b4 and taking a knight off. It just doesn't, it doesn't make much sense to me. Uh, what, what's a better looking system? I mean, knight f6. I don't know, bishop e7, <laughs> like in just castles, and the position seems fine to me. Um, I, I used to know some theoretical stuff here, but 
I kind of forget. But I, I know that somehow, somehow the way the game went just strikes me as a little, a little odd to just be giving up the two bit. Like it doesn't seem like it, it's necessary in this opening line. You know, it's funny. We could probably even do this. That's a little weird. But the idea is, if he takes, we just, uh, I, I was, I wanted to go d4, but he can, he can actually take it because of this. I don't know. I mean, somehow it strikes me as odd because like Black played perfectly, not perfectly. I maybe played perfectly. I just didn't look that close. But the moves seemed very good to me. Like every move looked very natural, and then he just won a pawn. Uh, and I can tell you, there's no freaking way that I'm giving like a 2,400 player. I'm not giving anyone a draw here. I don't care if you're Carlson. You know, you're gonna have to, <laughs> you're gonna have to try to defend this position. Uh, probably he'll succeed because he's world champion, but taking a draw here is, is not not acceptable. And so the main thing that the poster should learn from this game is this is a weakness. And next time he's either slightly better or unsure or up a pawn or whatever, don't ever offer a draw. Don't do that because, number one, first of all, if your opponent's better, and they're 200 points higher rated than you, they're probably not going to take the draw. This is like completely obvious psychology that all strong players know about. So you just don't bother offering a, a strong player a draw, because like a much stronger player, because they're only going to take it when the position's a dead, dead draw, or they're like worse. Um, and secondly, you just can't improve. I mean, it's harder to improve when you don't play positions like this out. Uh, and I think I gave some general ideas how to try to win. Just f6, king f7, slow maneuvering, no big rush, bring the knight back to e7 if needed. Put, put the pawn in b6 seems like a good thing to do because uh, that way you can't attack any of your pawns. And someday put your rook somewhere, maybe c5. Remember how I did the reorganization where I ended up with the bishop on d5? You know, at some point try to trade the bishops. That would be nice. Uh, once you do that, then you can kind of bring your king into the game and slowly try to make a pass pawn on the queen side. That's basically my long-term plan. Step one knight d is to so slightly activate the king because it's it's just a little. It's on the back rank here. It's not it's not so perfect, but it's a shame we we were robbed of a even more interesting end game. It would have been nice to see this game get played out a little bit. Uh, hopefully next time it will be. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.